It's episode 4 of my As a Bag of Hammers playthrough of Encased with my beautiful idiot here. We start off in the cave that we managed to wreck in the last episode, either saving everyone in the dome or dooming them. We'll have to find out. But before we can leave, I have to ditch my servo shell. Because apparently I can't get out here with it on. So let's be on our way. You peek out of the cave. It's dark outside. So dark that you, giving out a scared hiccup, hide back under the stone arc. After getting a little used to the surrounding blackness, you gently look out. Blue firefly lights are floating in the thick darkness. The dry, chilly air smells of cooling sand. When you look closer, you notice a tall white structure nearby. That I somehow missed on my way in. The screen on your Kairos blinks. The system reports an error while trying to update the built-in atlas. When the maps reload, the icons are gone. Only a single marker indicating your location remains. Well, you're still near Nashville, at least judging by the coordinates. So this is a bit different than my first playthrough, but that's always welcome. Looks like we have a body here. Prohibited. Employee currently deployed to the danger zone must leave. Encouraged to seek asylum. The city is far enough from... Closely Let's monitoring see if I can the turn mail... this off. Hit the radio. Radio sizzles like burning scrambled eggs, then recovers from the impact and resumes clattering in its usual mode. Call the police. <laughs> You complain to the radio about the latest unpleasant events that have occurred to you and ask to send uh, a lot of police cars, fire trucks, ambulances, tanks, helicopters, and, air and an aircraft carrier. As soon as possible, please. You are sure that soon, thanks to your message, the situation under the dome will soon be under control. Turn the knobs. The radio chitters. Attention. This is not a drill. In the area affected by the Maelstrom Megalomon... Meg... Megalo -ano Megalo anomaly. <laughs> Scenario 6C is currently taking place. Remaining in the yellow sector is prohibited. Employees currently deployed to the danger zone must leave the area immediately following standard evacuation protocol. The announcer's voice is briefly replaced with static, then resumes. All new committee citizens are encouraged to seek asylum. The city is far enough from the yellow sector to be considered safe under current circumstances. A distant wailing of emergency sirens can be heard through the speakers. The announcer keeps talking. Don't panic. Our scientists and security specialists are closely monitoring the maelstrom phenomenon. Any registered movement of psi fronts will be closely monitored. We urge you not to spread false rumors about the victims among the population. Maintain confidence in our new committee authorities. The problem will be solved as soon as it is feasible. Attention, this is not a drill. Okay, so these guys are authoritarians. <laughs> Let's hit the dashboard. Speakers fall silent for a moment, then begin to crackle and scurr with double force. The text of the announcement is still barely audible in places. Well, that appears to have shut it up. What I uh, realize I haven't been doing is, uh, well, I've been pickpocketing these people. And let's go ahead and do that. Oh, I've got two here. Okay. Let's see if I can single one out. I'm guessing these people aren't going to be friendly. I assume that as soon as we see the, these eyes, it means that they're not going to be friendly. So I'm going to try to pickpocket this person and then get a sneak attack. All right, go on in and steal one bolt. Great. And give her a whack. There is outsider radiation everywhere. Someone... Ah! Oh, smarter her to run away, I suppose. Okay, so I have to use up four AP. That's not a problem. Ah! Well, she's taking some... I have to remember, I'm not wearing my ah! servo shell anymore, so I'm going to take a lot more damage from hits. Well, apparently not too much, although... Uh, I do have to remember to... Oh, come on. There we go. Alright. Give her a whack. <laughs> Give him a whack. And AP0. Okay. Gotta say, it was nice of the guy with the gun to come to me. 
He could have made my life a lot more difficult if he just stayed far away. Ah! Ah! Which one of these is fighting stance? Okay, here's the wrestling stance. Hmm. I've been taking a lot more damage than I expected. Okay, so... Let's see. I definitely have to heal. Let's go ahead and use the full heal. Well, the almost full heal. Will this be enough? This should be enough. Start covering the distance. The downside of the wrestling stance is it does make me a lot slower, which means it'll take more action points to cover the distance. I don't think it can be turned off though. I think it it does its entire course either way. Hmm. I'm wondering if I should heal again. I I think I will be okay for one more turn. Although I'm not getting my full action points. Do I have something that's lowering my action points? Oh, I'm massively over encumbered. That's what's doing it. Okay. Okay, so I have nine points to spend. That can be three hits with the the stabby stabby. Let's do that. 444 experience. Did I get experience from those other ones? No. Okay, so 444 was for the lot of them. I am absolutely leaving a trail of bodies behind me. <laughs> oh, broken drink dispenser. That's usually a good sign. Yep. Ooh, money. Plenty of money. Let's see what secrets are waiting for us in this briefcase. Probably a relic. Relic dust. Eh, it's not bad. I think it's worth some money. In one of the trash cans, I came across this, and you notice it's not a temporary increaser. So we're going to go ahead and pop that for 15 points permanent in contraptions. There's some binoculars to look through up here, so let's start with the ones facing south. The binocular is fixed on a rigid holder which rocks in a funny way when you lean heavily on it. After some rocking, you decide to take a look through the device's oculars. You see mountains, a rusty desert, and appealing looking white pieces of metal which you guess to be the remnants of the spire station to the south. You also see Maelstrom, the ruins of Concord, and some filthy shacks. The filthy shacks turn out to be the already familiar roadside picnic neutral zone. It changed dramatically in the past time, turrets appeared along the road, and armed people are now wandering over the territory. Plenty of pieces remained of the collapsed spire station. You make several attempts to count them, but lose track every time. You drop this useless idea after the tenth try. There's just lots of them there. How about Concord? Maelstrom blocks the view of the station. We secretly hope that all the staff in Concord obeyed their mums and wore caps and no one caught cold. How about the Maelstrom? Someone's stupid finger blocks the view of the Maelstrom. <laughs> Move away. How about East? You put your face to the binoculars visor. You see tiny floor tiles with your footprints in the dust through the bulging lenses. Apparently, you should look in the binocular from the other side. <laughs> look in the binocular. You can see signs of civilization to the east. Mostly clean roads, few merchant caravans, houses huddling into settlements. There's some hideous buildings in the northern part of the area. Maybe New Jersey, though you're not sure. How about Magellan Station? You move the monocular's wheels and focus on an unsightly concrete building with airtight doors. Is it Magellan? How do so many people fit in there? How about the group of buildings? You study the unsightly buildings. Most of them resemble public toilets of different kinds. Some are decorated with wavering banners. Beautiful. The architecture under the dome is definitely very good, and such an impressive amount of toilets would do any settlement proud. How about the slums? You study rusty iron roofs, crumbling concrete walls, wind-fluttered orange tents, and fiddling people here and there. You look at the people particularly closely. Surprisingly, no one looks back at you. How about to the north? This shabby binocular is carefully studying the north of the dome. Now what is it looking at there? You see a dusty road, ruins, and an odd arc sticking out of the sand to the north. 
You stare into the horizon for a long while, trying to make out the sea and pirate ships, but there's nothing of the kind. Boring! How about the junction? It's just a road, tiny houses and cars standing beside it. You fail to reach them, no matter how hard you try. How about the Ark? An Ark it is, you see nothing special about it. Can we see the dome? Somewhere in the sands to the north, far beyond the Ark rising above the dunes, you can see the border of the dome. It's barely visible through the fuzzy hot air. Oh, you know a lock's not going to keep me out. I can punch my way through it. Ooh, a mask. That can go with my... Oh, it's not very good. I'll put it on. So with headgear, you see some headgear is both a helmet and a mask. Some of it's just a helmet, some of it's just a mask. I think there's some other combinations. We'll, we'll have to see what uh, we wind up finding. Lastly, binoculars facing west. You stop by the binocular. The orange casing bears half-erased words, Western Sector, on it. Surely this thing has a weird name. A wide, boring road stretches to the west, utterly white desert on either side of it. You see an enormous marshmallow sitting amongst the white sands. Well, it must be a marshmallow. Well, you know we want to look at the marshmallow. You stare at the white cube for a long while. It's outlined barely distinctive through the heat haze. No, it can't be a marshmallow after all. Where would it appear from amidst the desert? It must be an iceberg. How about the salt lakes? The sparkling spots turn out to be salt lakes at a closer look. You taste them, licking the lenses. Salt and <laughs> Gross. <laughs> or someone else licked the binocular before you. <laughs> Find Nashville Base. Nashville Base is located at the very bottom of the viewing point. The binocular focus there, you can see every crack in the concrete, every rusty spot on forgotten vehicles, and every empty soda can lying among the ruins. Of course, this takes some time. So one thing I don't remember from my first playthrough is whether or not I can walk out of here over encumbered. Let's find out. So the answer is yes, I can get to the overview map while encumbered, which means I'll immediately go to camp. You can set camp anywhere you want at any time. Well, anywhere on the overview map. And most importantly, it has my personal box. So all that stuff that I managed to get over encumbered with, I can throw in the pile of other junk that I picked up in Picnic. And let's go ahead and sleep. You'll walk through the desert and suddenly pass out, falling face down into sand. When you come to your senses, after eating quite the amount of sand, you raise your head that is filled with a strange hum. Well, that's not great. The space around you is again washed away with waves of fog, but it's different this time. The smooth white haze conceals all unnecessary things, highlighting only the important. There is a shimmering column of blue light to the northeast. It shoots up through the clouds like a beam of a huge lighthouse directed to the sky. Also, you have a hell of a headache. As if someone was hitting it with a cast iron pan. Even the tasty sand <laughs> doesn't make it better. Eat a bit more of the sand and continue. You are a Cronus employee. So nothing can stop you. After eating some sand to boost your mood, you continue your journey, overcoming the pain with determination. The headache and hum soon pass. All that remains is a slowly dissipating fog in the blue glow fading away in the distance. You've seen this fading glow before, but from a different angle. The explosion that flashed through the clouds pushed apart by Maelstrom. This strange beam of light is what remains. It must mean something. Maybe there to the northeast is where your path now lies. You drag yourself along the desert road through a wasteland baking in the heat and dotted with the white blotches of salt lakes. An unidentifiable noise catches your attention. Peering into the distance, you spy several dark figures. So I could try to sneak past them, but, well, let's go say hi. But let's go into sneak mode to start out. Okay, so we've got a couple people. Well, it looks like going up to say hi was probably not the best idea. 
my sneak is excellent, so I should be able to walk past them if I want to, but I'm going to go in close. If one of them is armed with a gun, I'm going to take him on first. Well, let's just get closer. Let's see what there is to see. Okay, so we got two people there. Baseball bat. Well, I'm not entirely sure what that is. Looks like a crossbow? That's a crossbow. What do you have? Okay, so we have four people here. And some sort of android thing. Hmm. I definitely want to take them on. If we're going to take them on, we should definitely take on one of the armed ones first. So let's go ahead and give them a whack. That didn't seem to do much damage at all. <laughs> Here's hoping that consecutive whacks do more damage. Oh. Gotta remember. Fighting stance. And let's go ahead and use that one. Okay, Lodge Disc, so I am losing a little bit of health each turn. Although it, it looks like I haven't spooked anyone else, which is a good thing. Here's hoping I can take this guy down without uh, causing any more of a ruckus. Nice. 63 experience. Okay. Um, hmm. Do I think I'll be... Oh, jeez, there, there's still four more. So these guys don't seem to be calling for help. So if I can isolate them, I can probably take them down one at a time. Oh, I need to go back into stealth. <laughs> I'm not going to be taking them down one at a time. Okay. Is this guy far enough over? Let's do it. Ouch. Ouch. Okay, so I definitely need to use the, the first aid. Best off to just raise the defense class. Am I... Okay, so I'm still in my wrestling stance. Ooh, miss is not good. Okay, so I've caught the attention of another one. Puts me for 26. Oh. <laughs> okay, um, uh, well. I'm gonna have to try to take one of them down. I think I can survive the other one, but. 416 experiment, or experience points, okay. I'm gonna have to use a med kit. There's no question this was a terrible idea. Well, I mean, it's a terrible idea if I die. <laughs> it's a great idea if I live. Ooh, man, that's not good. That's nice, though. Got me a level up. Let's see, is this uh, a level that I'm going to get a perk for? It is, and this one's huge. I didn't realize this was in here when I was setting up this characters. So all of my skills are going to go up by three points times how much fortune I have set on this character, which is 10. So I'm going to get 30 points in all skills. And if you remember before how I mentioned there's a distinction between you know your base skills and the boosted skills, Savant boosts base skills. So this is going to raise all of my skills past the first tier. I didn't realize this. That means things like I, I didn't actually have to push hand to hand to 60. I could have pushed it to 30, although I wouldn't have had it in the interim. But now it's at 90, which is awesome. <laughs> I got a whole bunch more points. And I mean, this is just a lot of free points in a whole bunch of different things. This is going to make a big difference. What am I going to put these into right now, though? Well, we definitely need to push up melee weapons. So let's go ahead and put 10 into melee weapons, which unlocks tier 3. That's nice. And I want criminal going up as well, so I think that's going to be the balance for the, the next while. 
Excellent. Yeah, we're keeping that. So, only one got spooked there. Let's see if I can keep it that way. Oh, bunch more abilities to go through. Oh, he didn't die from that. This is gonna hurt. Or not? You're just gonna do a stun on me? And I'm gonna run. Okay. I do want to take this one out here on first. Luckily I can get in real close. And he is walking away, so he's getting whacked. Ooh, big crit. While it means I'm not going to get off another hit, I should have done this first. I didn't. <laughs> so be it. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can finish him off. Excellent. And whack. Ooh, big hit. And that's not going to finish them off. Let's take a look at what else we have. Weakening strike. No. Blindside. Lacerations. Yeah, that's Dr. Death. Well, that's kind of cool. Poisoned. Poisoned isn't too helpful on something with a low health. Uh, inspiring finisher. Okay, so we'll use Mercy Strike because that has a big ol' crit multiplier. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Oh, jeez, before I do anything else heal up. So the first time I played the game through, I played it as a light weapons build. I just, you know, figured I'd start out generic. I gotta say, melee is way more effective <laughs> than light weapons. Either that or, well, let's be honest, I didn't know what I was doing the first time around. This has actually turned out to be a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, but that's not a terrible thing. Let's head out. So while I forgot to mention it before, that Savant is only available to characters with brains under 3, I think it is. I'm not sure if this game actually has any time limits. Uh, I didn't see any. I've, I've never... Uh, oh, what do we have here? I've never read about any, but that doesn't mean it doesn't. It kind of strikes me as the game that might, but my first playthrough I didn't come across any. So hopefully all this sleeping isn't going to bite me. <laughs> bite me later. But, yeah, I don't think it will. Crossroads. A man rushes to stop you from behind a large boulder. All he is wearing is some badly worn underwear and humane handcuffs. His skin bears about a dozen tattoos. On the left side of the chest is a large and ornate one saying, Lenny. It looks like that's his name. Wait, wait. The orange looks frightened and worried. He throws his trembling hands up and tries to speak quietly, but quickly and jerkily. Don't. Don't go farther. It's dangerous there. There's those... was name... Afflicted. I mean, those guys geeked up by the maelstrom. Attacking everyone they see. I'd rather go home. My home's over there, but I can't pass. He trails off, looks at you more closely, and raises an eyebrow. Oh shit. Looks like I'm in trouble. We're in trouble. <laughs> Hide your head under your wing, frightened, even though the wing looks like a usual elbow. The man's face expresses an absolute understanding and approval of your position. Yeah, that's right, buddy. They're afflicted right there. Those you know... Err, ah, scary, dangerous. They won't let me back home, so... Drum a farewell march on your belly and stride away into... Later. Supply barrel. How much do you want to bet that that's booby-trapped? No, it's just a generic supply barrel. Okay, so it's unlikely that I'm going to be able to take these guys on without drawing a bunch of attention. Oh, but there is something that I've been meaning to try. So let's put away the this. I want to see whether or not it was a, uh, a bad idea to put a bunch of points into... Let's try shot grenades. I put a bunch of points into contraptions, as you recall. I'm not sure if contraptions is actually uh, determined by perception. So let's see. Oh, guess not. Okay, so that wasn't a terrible idea. First off, we'll go ahead and fighting stance up. And let's go ahead and hit these guys with a grenade. Traces and fractals. Traces and fractals. 
I probably the should have covered the distance first. Fractals. Traces and fractals. Let's... You're going to just come to me anyway. So let's go ahead and run our way forward. Ooh, minus two action points for uh, that Psy attack. Knocked out. Oh, great. Someone's touched it. I think uh, when you're knocked out, you miss a turn. Let's find out. Uh, I, I don't like the fact that I'm getting uh, nailed over and over here, but it doesn't look like they're doing much in the way of damage. But cumulative, it could wind up being a serious problem. Enraged and distracted. Well, what is our best plan? We still have in a wrestling stance up. Let's see what home run does. Actually, you know what? I should probably give this guy a slice first. Actually, can I just kill him here? No. Let's go ahead and do a home run on him. And do I need to do anything else? Let's cover the distance. Now is, okay, I can't move, but I wasn't going to be moving anyway. Do I want to use a med kit? Let's go ahead and burn a turn. Hmm, let's, let's just use a med kit. Ooh, hits all targets in the wide cone. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> So I want to do another home run so I can take out this guy. Uh. Maybe I get both of them? Uh. I get both of them. <laughs> Someone touched us, covered our places with their scent. Did you seriously just walk right up to me? You have a gun. What are you thinking? Ah. Ah. That was ill-advised. <laughs> Do you have some sort of special... You didn't even... <laughs> you weren't even loaded. Oh my god. Okay. Um, whack. Whack. And just in case I have like any poison on me or something. <laughs> oh, extreme fatigue. <laughs> wow. True professional right here. <laughs> okay, I didn't realize there was a timer function which let me skip forward about half an hour. Luckily one of them has coffee, although what I'm gonna try to do is get out of here so I can sleep instead of going through any consumables. If it turns out that there's a time limit, there probably isn't a time limit to complete the game, but I'm wondering if there's anything that gets locked out under a time limit. I am not going to make that time limit, <laughs> nor am I gonna try. Oh, oh, mines. <laughs> okay, uh, I am wondering, am I in any position to actually uh, disarm a mine? Oh, wow. I can punch this mine until it's disarmed. Uh, or at least that was my understanding. How about this earth pile here? Ooh, a machete. That could be interesting. And a punching glove. A level four punching glove. Well, let's go ahead and have a look at that machete. Okay, so it's a it's a slow weapon. Twenty nine to thirty five, twenty four, or twenty to twenty four. That's a lot of damage. Any other circumstance, I think the machete is actually better than the shiv. But with my eleven action points, the shiv actually makes more sense because I can get two hits with the hammer. And I can get one hit with a shiv. Well, we're definitely robbing the guy. <laughs> and 
passing out again. <laughs> Ooh, pants. Okay, well, oh, what do we have here? Okay, that's a temporary boost. Take the grenade. How does this compare? So it's slightly worse than what I have, except what I have has a minus 15, or had, has a minus 15 evasion. This actually increases the amount of time, or sorry, decreases the amount of time it'll take an enemy to find me while I'm sneaking, but it seems that the amount of time that I have is ages, so I think I can suffer it. We got something? This rock is definitely a magic one. Your friend Lenny turns out to be behind it again, and he doesn't mind to have a talk. What's going on? The afflicted? Did they leave? Maybe you could just... Though it's so dangerous, oh my. Assume an action hero stance, then swing your arms and legs, depicting an epic battle and a great triumph. Lenny clutches his head. Wolf... Whoa! Way to go! So it means the way is free, eh? Thanks a lot, pal. Then I'll go check on my house. And, uh... They definitely robbed it. See ya! And I got bonus reputation. That uh, makes up for my uh, game in the first episode where I lost five reputation with the uh, orange wing. So taking a nap back at camp, it looks like we have another event. Many people fly in their dreams. When you lower your head to the pillow, you're almost instantly looking up upon a sprawling desert with a dome in the center. Except there's no crystal sands and there's no spire at the apex, just you, the desert, and a dome. You ascend into the sky in a wide spiral, like a bird of prey gliding on an updraft. Coming towards you is the dark green maelstrom rising from beneath the almost invisible border of the dome. The storm is tangled with frequent flashes of lightning. These bright arcs of light are somehow coming together to form letters of an unknown alphabet. You peer at the message, trying to grasp its meaning, until suddenly a horrifying understanding runs through your being. You jerk back, trying to fly higher, to get away from here, but Maelstrom has enveloped you. It's swallowing you whole. You wake and immediately sit up, totally exhausted. What a hideous dream. But perhaps Maelstrom really was trying to convey a message. So sometimes you get that when you try to sleep, uh, you have a bad dream. And it doesn't count towards rest, which is unfortunate. And apparently I'm still fatigued. Still very fatigued. Now let's sleep some more. The hum in your head that has accompanied you from the moment you left Nashville that went almost silent, returns again. Barely able to stay on your feet, you look around. The road took you to a strange slum of rusty iron roofs. Above them, you can clearly see a faintly glowing column of blue light, just like in the first vision that visited you shortly after you awoke. Somewhere in these slums is the unknown, but apparently important goal of your journey. So I suppose it's the case with most RPGs that you wind up remembering the story, but not so much what happens in the, the journeys between the locations. I wasn't expecting to get in two different fights just on my way from Nashville to Junktown here, but that's exactly what happened. Well, Junktown has an awful lot going on, and it's enough for an episode of its own, so that will have to wait for the next episode, and I will see you then.